two years ago. I sold my 986 generation Porsche Boxster, and now I regret it. My 986 Boxster was a very clean car with relatively low miles and turned plenty of heads. But I had that itch for a 911 and decided to move on to a 996, the unloved 911 at the time. I guess I have a soft spot for sports cars that not everyone loves. The Boxster is all about the curves. My current 996 generation Porsche 911 has very good handling, but you are very aware of all that weight hanging over the rear axle. Thanks to its mid-engine layout, the Boxster is more confidence inspiring especially when you are on a new road. With the 911, you need to be very purposeful about your braking into a corner and then power through the corner. But with the Boxster, you can confidently carry more speed into the corner. I love the 911, but the engine layout of the Boxster was perfect and it did have me constantly looking for a good windy back road. Many people may not think it would be the case, but my 986 Boxster was easier to work on than my 996. While it is a bit more involved to get to the top of the engine in the Boxster than the 911, once there, everything is easy to get to and the Boxster also has a removable panel behind the seats that allows for easy access to the drive belt. Thanks to its setup, jobs such as replacing the air oil separator and water pump are easier jobs in a Boxster than an I-11. With my 9 and 6, when replacing the water pump, I had to lower the engine slightly to get enough access and that isn't necessary on a 986. Overall, the Boxster is slightly easier for a backyard mechanic to maintain and that is definitely a plus. Even though it doesn't get much love, the Tiptronic is actually a pretty good transmission. It is wonderful and simply bulletproof if maintained and gives the option for manual mode and easing your burden when in stop and go traffic. As good as a Tiptronic is, the manual transmission has a more involving driving experience. Ultimately, since I planned on daily driving my 911, I decided to try out a Tiptronic model as from daily driving my manual transmission Boxster, I was having knee issues. Since getting the Tiptronic 996, my knee has been much better, but I certainly wish I would have kept the Boxster for the manual transmission on the weekend, while still adding the 911 to the garage. And these days, having a manual transmission is an added anti-theft device, as the amount of people that seem to be able to drive it dwindles down less and less day by day. My 996 is a hard top, well, it does have a sunroof. It is a bit more structurally rigid than the Boxster, but the difference isn't too noticeable at legal speeds. The 996, of course, is available in a cabriolet, and I did look at some that were convertibles, but I got such a good deal on my coupe, and I do love the lines of the hardtop 911. Still, there are times when it would be nice to have the top open and experience the wind in your hair while driving. With the top down, it adds so much drama to the driving experience, even when you aren't driving all that fast. The Boxster offered all that drama, and I think it is quite the looker with the top down. In fact, it looks even better with the top down, and you can see its 550 Spider inspired design. And for most of us, this is the closest that we'll get to owning a 550 Spider without going for a replica. The 996 has an extra 100 horsepower, and at just under 300 horsepower, it's pretty usable on the street. But the early Boxster at just 201 horses allowed for you to use all of the power more of the time. The 996 still allows much more use of its power than a brand new 911 where you're going to be going directly to jail if you lose all of its power. With the early 996, you can rev it out more often and enjoy using all of its power, making driving more fun. It may be a momentum car and not one that will blow others away, but once you get that speed up and choose the right gear to keep it in the sweet spot on a windy back road, that smile just won't stop. You'll also have a smile that just won't stop if you subscribe to this channel. Results may vary. The 996 is a great car and in a perfect world, I would have still bought it and kept the Boxster, but I just didn't have the space at the time. The reality is that I wanted the extra horsepower and having the back seats for my little ones was a nice extra. However, as I reflect on this, perhaps I should have been content with what I had. The Boxster was a great car and while I love my 996, I'm not sure I'm any happier now. With cars, we often chase the next thing to fill the void, which is kind of like grasping at the wind. But if the goal is for increased happiness, then lasting joy probably won't be found in that next car. So being content with what you have is the key and moving on only when the time is right, not just for the next temporary thrill. The thing is that I've hopefully grown a bit. I'm planning on keeping my 996 and making it the best version of itself, at least that I can build for a reasonable price. So check out this video of me giving it a much better exhaust note.